Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Talented German heavyweight Ajit Kabial is set to return from another period of inactivity, facing the Greek heavyweight Evgenius Lazaridis this weekend. Also on the SES promoted card is a young heavyweight Peter Kaderu, who's currently 7-0. He's facing an unbeaten fighter in Ruben Wolf. So we'll talk about these two different fights and a few thoughts uh, towards the back end on Kabyal and the sort of um, potential that he's got, but it just seems to be fritted away at this point. He's still got time, just 27 years old, but the last uh, two or three years, bit of a write-off really. But in terms of um, this weekend, Kabyal returning for his annual fight, sort of similar to Gary Russell Jr., except unlike Gary Russell Jr., he's not getting million dollar paydays. Really has been a bit of a wasted three years in some respects since beating Derek Chisora in 2017, just fighting once a year and really sort of dropping off the map to some extent. But we'll get to that a bit later. Lazaridis, uh, he is a guy who's 32 years old, a record of 16 and 2. And I look at this fight similar to the one that was scheduled with Marius Fuck that was ahead of the, the pandemic really taking hold. That was meant to happen at the back end of March. Similar sort of fight in my view that this guy is going to take Ajit Kabayal some rounds and this is really what Kabayal needs at this point. Uh, Lazaridis has got two losses. One of them was in a decent fight with uh, Erkin Tepper. That was a points decision win to Tepper, but only just. It was quite a close and competitive to fight. But um, for this fight with Ajit Kabayal, Kabayal will just have too much class. I believe he's going to box his ears off and this one is over 10 rounds so it might be something like 7 rounds to 3, 8 rounds to 2. That would sort of be my prediction. There is a possibility that he could stop Lazaridis, but I would see this one going the distance if I was to sort of hazard a guess. So yeah, it's okay in terms of the fight, given that, you know, he hasn't been in the ring, this is Kabayal, since he beat Andre Rodenko, and that was in March 2019. So it's been a long time between drinks. It's uh, over 12 months now, and it would have been a year out of the ring by the time he fought Marius Fuck if that fight had have gone ahead back in March earlier this year. So it is a case of the last few years that it, it's been a, a wasted sort of time and not exactly sort of stepping up to where we would have thought he would have gone. But I think he will be better for the rounds and the activity in this fight. 27 years old, six foot three, good boxer. I think he's going to outpoint Lazaridis in this one. And this is in um, a card uh, that SES is putting on in Magdeburg, Germany. And apparently there is going to be some fans in attendance. So it's a little bit surprising, but I guess they must uh, feel confident about whatever protocols they're going to have in place. So I think this will be uh, a good tune up for Ajit Kabayal. But nothing more. I don't think Lazaridis is really going to trouble him. And if he does, that certainly is a bit of a red flag for Ajit Kabayal. He is a guy that I rate as a top 15 heavyweight. But it's sort of hard to keep him in and around that level based on the inactivity. But every time I see him fight, I'm impressed. And I like what he brings, his attributes. He's got decent size, very good skills, very good mover. And he, I think he's got underrated power too. Although you know his KO um, ratio was 68%. I think, you know, there has been um, some fights, say like the Rodenko one, where he's, you know, he did put the hurt on Rodenko at times. So hopefully he gets through this fight, gets some rounds as the better for it, doesn't get cut or injured. And we see him back soon. And I'll come to him a little bit later in terms of the what next. But first, um, we'll just uh, touch on Peter Kaderu, 23 years old, currently 7-0. and He's facing a guy called Ruben Wolf, and BoxRec doesn't even have a photo of this guy. So this promotional poster is the first I've seen of Wolf. I'm not familiar with him, but just running down the record here on BoxRec, he's 5-0 and and all five wins, uh, but it is the record's very Christopher Lovejoy-esque. He's got um, five wins against guys that have all got 20 plus lo losses on their records. So it certainly does look like a very padded record, and you'd have to sort of hazard a guess, even though I haven't seen this guy fight before, that he is going to uh, lose
goes to Peter Kaderu. And if I had to guess, I mean, this one here is an eight rounder. Possibly Kaderu stops him, but maybe this one will end up going to points. There is a question at this top level, and certainly the fights that I've seen so far from Kaderu. How much power does he actually have? He was a very good amateur, but there's a question about his transition to the pros in terms, one, the power, but also is the style really sort of um, crossing over well? I'm just not so sure, but I need to see more. And, you know, obviously at this stage in his career, 7-0, and he's a guy that came into the pros with a bit, a bit of buzz and a bit of hype because he was a good amateur, but he really is just easing into it. He's still looking relatively raw in these early fights, as you would expect to some degree, but maybe he isn't as further along as some people originally thought of him. But I expect him to win this one. I expect Kabiel to win this one. And, and the what next for Kabiel is an interesting question because a lot of people forget he signed a co-promotional deal with Top Rank to fight on ESPN. He would have been fighting in the United States, starting the next chapter in the United States if it hadn't have been for the pandemic. As it was, he was meant to be fighting in January of this year in the United States for his first Top Rank fight. That was meant to be against Victor Bisbal. But what happened, there was some visa issue. He had to get that sorted. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was some concern about the pandemic and he had a fight scheduled in Germany for the end of March uh, against uh, Marius Fuck. That was going to serve as a tune-up fight, to, you know, and he would have won that one. I have no doubt about that. And I know that there are some people who are a bit higher on Vuk now because he gave an out-of-shape Dillian White a good fight. But um, Vuk was never going to be beating Ajit Kabuyao. And, it, you know, I'm almost offended that people think that would be the case at this point. Vuk is a shell of a shell at this point. Sure, he's been coming in better shape and his performances have been a bit better in the last year or so. But he is basically trading on his name and his record at this point. He's being brought in as the opponent so he wasn't going to beat uh, Ajit Kabayal and I think people who believe that haven't seen enough of Kabayal yet to really know what this guy is about but hopefully once things start uh, you know dampening down with the pandemic that he is able to resume his career this is Kabayal in the United States and get into some of the fights that he should be in because arguably there's some good fights in-house fights top rank loves in-house fights to be made at top rank on ESPN. There are guys like Oscar Rivas, there's Carlos Takam, Brian Jennings, there's some names there he could very well fight and beat. I believe at the moment he would give Oscar Rivas a very good fight. That's probably the closest of those three, but he beats the other two guys all day. But what do you make of it all? Ajit Kabiel back in the ring this weekend versus Yevgenius Lazaridis and Peter Kaderu, the young prospect against Ruben Wolf. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.